Hello and welcome again to Chair Red Radio. And it's the usual team here. I'm Ian McNay and we have Professor John Reed and Matt Ingham. And we're going to play lots of fantastic tunes today. As usual, mainly Trey Red, but certainly two or three that are not Trey Red. And we're actually going to start this time with Professor John Reed kicking off with three of our um, new box sets. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, we're going to start with, uh, we're going to take it right back to the 60s, as is my want. Uh, the latest uh, three CD compilation on grapefruit is entitled, rather aptly, What a Groovy Day. The British Sunshine Pop Sound 1967 to 72. Sunshine Pop, I suppose, being inspired by the West Coast Harmony Pop Sound of the late 60s by the Mamas and Papas and their ilk. Uh, so we're going to hear two tracks from that compilation. Uh, the first is Harmony Grass uh, with What a Groovy Day, the title track, followed by a rare, I think it was a demo, uh, early demo track by Genesis called Try a Little Sadness. Children playing in the sun Without their shoes or even their trousers on Straight at you, take. 
take his life and change it That's what you always do You're still in the days of childhood Where everything is wrong and no good I can see what you try What you try to be Let me tell you now your feet You say it's fun to live Where there's always take and no give Don't you see But where you're living is a world of sin just heard Try a Little Sadness, the rare track by Genesis uh, from their early sessions with producer Jonathan King. And prior to that, you heard Harmony Grass. That's the uh, uh, Tony Rivers, the singer Tony Rivers, uh, with the track What a Groovy Day. And they're both from the compilation What a Groovy Day, which is out now on Grapefruit Records. Uh, another compilation we've just released is the third instalment of our ongoing year-by-year -year document of synth pop. We've got as far as 1982. Uh, the compilation, once again, is called Music, Music, Music. This edition is 3.0, Synth Pop on the Air. And we're going to hear two tracks from that compilation. Tears of Fears with the classic Pale Shelter and European Sun by Japan.
just heard Pearl Shelter by Tears for Fears, followed by Japan's European Sun, both are taken from the new compilation Music, Music, Music 3.0, 1982, Synth Pop on the Air. Uh, yeah, and speaking of Synth Pop, uh, we've also just released a compilation of the band New Music, who were uh, signed to GTO Records around that time and immediately had success. Um, a band quite close to our heart here because they were from Wimbledon. And as many of you Whoa! know, many of you will know, uh, we are very much involved with the legendary AFC Wimbledon. And uh, But yeah, new music, uh, straight out the blocks, had lots of success. And this new compilation is called uh, From A to B, Anywhere, Warp Remixes. And basically includes everything that the band did for a GTO and beyond, I think. And we're going to play their first single, which was also a hit, straight out the blocks. This is Straight Lines.
That was Straight Lines by synthpop band New Music from their new box set called From A to B. Moving on to another of our new compilations, again uh, on Grapefruit Records, uh, curated by David Wells. Uh, this one's very much a sort of high highbrow retrospective, really. It's called Deviation Street, High Times in Ladbroke Grove, 1967 to 75. A time when you had, I guess, a lot of middle class hippie types moving into an area, predominantly black, I suppose, at the time. And you got this real melting pot of different sounds and influences. This was the dawn of the Notting Hill Carnival, a lot of interesting music, psychedelia, soul, folk, uh, proto heavy metal and so on. And this compilation is amazing. It starts with Notting Hill Gate by Quintessence and then Hawkwind, who were based there, Carol Grimes, Psychedelic Band Tomorrow, lots and lots of different stuff. We're going to hear two tracks from that compilation. Black Leather, Black Leather Gloves by Bo Dast, who featured future Yes guitarist Steve Howe. And, and Keith and West as well, I think, wasn't it? Absolutely, from yeah. Tomorrow. And then a track, Looking for Time, from Bond and Brown, which is Graham Bond and Pete Brown. Pete Brown being the guy who'd done a lot of the lyrics for Cream. So, yeah, two tracks uh, from Deviation Street. <laughs> Relay 
ladies wearing blossoms Closing the curtains of the house Past the morning's pieces Safe in the light Following the leader Back into night Searching for the treasure Lost in the sky Looking for time to stop looking Leading our ship by the hand Green seas are wearing roses Showing their love on demand You just heard two tracks from Deviation Street, subtitled High Times in Ladbroke Grove, 1967-75, Black Leather Gloves by Bodast, and Looking for Time by Bond and Brown. Now I'm going to hand back to Ian to talk about a Miller Anderson reissue. Yeah, well, Miller, Miller Anderson is someone I've always liked over the years, and I remember seeing him playing with Spencer Davis' group many moons ago, and I thought, what a, what a guitarist and what a voice, just very powerful. And we've now uh, reissued his first solo album, which came out in 1971. The album was called Bright City, and the track we're playing is also called Bright City. And here it is. Bright City the best of me Force changes As the seasons quickly turn I ask for nothing And get that in return Bright city your fires burn Our feelings are set aside to meet our grief We're searching for something that we don't really City, far from the cold winds of the north No moonlight playing sadly across the love I ask for nothing and get that in return 
bright city Let me see you burn That was Bright City by Miller Anderson. And it's got a very interesting past, Miller, because he worked a lot with Ian Hunter before Mott the Hoople in various bands. Also worked with Keith Hartley, uh, Spencer Davis, as I mentioned, The Dukes, Mountain, Savoy Brown, T-Rex, Chicken Shack, British Blues Quintet, Maggie Bell and Zoot Money. So quite a track record there for Miller. And it's, uh, it's a jolly good album. I'm now going to pass over to Matt Ingham. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, I'd like to play a couple of tracks from Luke Haynes' new auteurs box set. As you all know by now, Luke is a good friend of Cherry Red. We enjoy releasing new music from Luke, but we also liked his auteurs project. I don't imagine, Ian, you saw them back in the day. Yeah, they were. They were always. They were always a great band. The old, the old tours and the, the tracks you're going to play. Actually, it's no secret that I chose two of my favourite auteurs yeah. tracks. Two of the best. Two of the most well known as well. Um, I personally, I prefer the Steve Albini release, the After Murder Park album. But you can't go wrong with these two. This is Showgirl and Lenny Valentino.
That was Showgirl and Lenny Valentino by the Auteurs, and I'm now going to pass back over to Ian. But we should also say what else is in the box set, because it's by the Meinhof as well, isn't that it? That is a very good point. Yeah, Which I'm not doing my job here. So it is, it's a very righteous six CD collection, this new Auteurs box set, called People Around Here Don't Like to Talk About It. And it's the complete EMI recordings of the Auteurs, plus the Bada Meinhof album he did. And there's um, Das Capital as well, which I think a lot of fans were, were really interested in having that on CD. Yeah, and By the Mind Half was a very brave title for a band, name for a band. Absolutely, as, as yeah. They were a rather, uh, how can we put it, a rather renowned German terrorist group who I'm <laughs> sure uh, I'm sure he had uh, no connection with. It, absolutely not. <laughs> Although I did, I must say, I just, just coming into my mind here, when I was travelling years ago, and I was um, in Hawaii, and I, was, I went to the one of the least inhabited parts of uh, Maui, and I met this guy who claimed to have been in the Barter Meinhof group. Now, how true that is, I don't know, because if he had been, then why did he tell me? But he seemed quite proud about it, and, and who knows? He obviously thought he could trust you. He must have a trustworthy... Face. <laughs> well, I'm giving the story out now. It's <laughs> yeah. like 25 years later or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so we're now going to talk about Rupert Hine. And I'm just looking here to have the box set in my hand as we talk. So Rupert was, again, a good friend of Trey Red. Such a terrific guy and such an amazing track record he had of all the people and bands he worked with. But we'll start off with playing the music and we're going to play a track called Hang On To My Vertigo by Rupert Hine. To go, I hang on to my 
That was Hang On To My Vertigo by Rupert Hine. And that is a three CD box set, which includes his albums Immunity, Waving Not Drowning, and The Wildest Wish To Fly. Um, Hang On To My Vertigo is probably one of his best known tracks. But when you look at Rupert's track record, mainly as a producer, I'm gonna read some of the bands he produced. Rush. Kevin Ayres, Tina Turner, Howard Jones, Thompson Twins, Stevie Nicks, Krista Burr, Suzanne Fager. But, and of course he also had um, a band called Think Man, which was kind of a pseudo, pseudo name that he, he chose. And he was also in Quantum Jump, who had a, a hit, a number five hit actually, in 1979 with a track called The Lone Ranger. Rupert sadly departed about two years ago, but as I said, he was a good friend of, uh, of Cherry Red and we all, we all really liked him. And then something else we're very proud of is a amazing box set of The Turn of a Friendly Card, which is the Alan Parsons Project. And let me start again by playing the music. Here's a track from that project called Maybe a Price to Pay.
And of course, Alan Parsons was a legendary character and he was, he was more of a, someone who put projects together and had different vocalists and different, uh, and different musicians playing, playing the instruments. And um, the turn of a friendly card, which is the track that was taken from, is um, actually his fifth studio album, which came out in 1980 on Arista Records. And I'm just looking at it here, having it in my hand, and it's actually four CDs with all kinds of bonuses. Wonderful package with a book, and probably uh, it's an album that's, that's kind of almost matured in time. Now, something else which um, intrigued me, because uh, Alan Parsons always intrigued me. I worked at Arista when he uh, had some of his albums out, and there, there was always something, something different. And I, I, liked, I liked very much the theme of, 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 of his projects and the people he involved. And I had a little break recently, went, went away to Canary Island to try and find some sun. Sadly, the sun eluded me, but what I did find time to do was to read Trevor Horn, the producer's autobiography. And it just reminded me what an amazing producer he was. And not just that, that how he got to where he got, because he, um, he worked so hard as a, as a bass player, basically as a musician, very poor family, outside toilet, which we can't imagine now. Um, but his, his, and his father did play. His father was a part-time musician. And the father, his father bought him a guitar. He was determined to be a musician. And for years, he just worked in these bands, traveling up and down the country. And then, of course, he had his, he had his breaks. And the thing that I, I got from the book primarily was the role he played as a producer. And for most of the acts he worked with, the acts were not in the studio most of the time. It was him and his production team that created the records. And there's three very different um, tracks I'm going to play. I'll play them one after the other, all of which he's, he produced, and all of which his contribution was in a different way. We're going to start with Yes, Owner of a Lonely Heart, Act, Snobbery and Decay, and The Art of Noise, Moments in Love. All tracks I love personally.
okay, that was yes, owner of a lonely heart, act, snobbery and decay, and the art of noise, moments in love. And, and Trevor came in to produce an album called 90125, which was the 11th studio album for Yes, and that, that track is off that album. It came out in 1983. And, of course, he ended up, as for one album, as the, um, as the vocalist and a, mem a member of Yes. And then Act was a project from 1987, which was Thomas Lear and Claudia Bruken. And Thomas Lear, of course, was originally signed to Cherry Red. He had a great single called All About You. And Claudia Bruken was in Propaganda and has re-emerged with some solo projects and also as a reformed Propaganda as ex-Propaganda. And The Art of Noise, Moments in Love, a beautiful, beautiful track, which was Trevor and Dudley and Paul Maudley. So, seems I'm still going here, looking at the notes. I um, wanted to play a couple of more tracks that weren't essentially Trey Red releases. The first one is by Gary Newman, called Little In Vito. Empty and lost over you 
Little in Vita is on Idel Records. It's a reissue from an album Gary put out in the year 2000 called Pure. And it's substantially reproduced, whatever that means, but substantially reproduced, not just a remix. It wasn't that commercially successful when it originally came out, but I think it's an interesting album. And then I wanted to play a new track by Robert Foster. Robert Foster, of course, was originally the Go-Betweens, who I knew quite well years and years ago. Um, Robert now has a solo career. And... Um, Here's a track called Tender Years from his um, new album, Candle and the Flame.
So, and that was Robert Foster, Tender Years, which was taken from his eighth solo album called Candle and the Flame. And I'm now going to bring back Professor John Reed, who seems to be engaged in something else there, hopefully some research for what he's about to tell us. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, we've got a couple more compilations to talk about. We've been quite busy with our, our three CD packages. Uh, the first is a belated sequel to five CD set we put out, I think, in 2016 called Still in a Dream, which uh, attempted to document uh, shoegaze, which was a term invented by a few music journalists uh, to describe a handful, a clutch of bands in the early 90s. Um, but it's a term that got adopted, as with many of these, these situations, much more broadly. And especially abroad, shoegaze sort of took on a, a life of its own, really. Anyway, fast forward, what, six, seven years, and we've, we've uh, followed Still in a Dream with a compilation that sort of mixes up the idea of shoegaze with another sort of rather nebulous term, dream pop, uh, which is, again, difficult to kind of bottle or frame, but I guess it's sort of music that's quite atmospheric. I guess Cocteau Twins would be one of the bands that you would cite as an influence on it. And anyway, this all leads to this compilation, Cherry Stars Collide, subtitled Dream Pop, Shoegaze and Ethereal Rock, 1986 to 1995. And we've got acts listed on the front, as diverse as Mazzy Star, A.R. Kane, Copter Twins, This Mortal Coil, Slow Dive, Julie Cruz, The Chameleons, Chapter House, Lush and so on, Dead Can Dance. We're going to hear three tracks from Cherry Stars Collide. I Remember by The Chameleons. Hey by Cherry Red Signings, Blind Mr. Jones, and Dub Stars, Just a Girl She Said. Well, I just wanted to say that as I did choose those tracks, they are so different. And that's one of the reasons I chose them. They're all completely different, and yet they all fit in the overall theme very, very well. Yeah, I think the compilation hangs together, but it's, it's rather than a genre, it's really an idea. What is dream pop? And uh, yeah, I think it kind of works. So... It more than kind of works because, as I said to you previously, it's one of those box sets, because I play everything in the car we put out, one of those box sets I ended up paying, playing two or three times in the car because I enjoyed it so much.
So that, you just heard three tracks from Cherry Styles Collide, I Remember by The Chameleons, Hey by Blind Mr Jones, and Dub Stars, Just A Girl She Said. As I say, all three from Cherry Styles Collide, Dream Pop, Shoegaze, and Ethereal Rock, 1986 to 1995. Moving on to a, another sequel, as it were, uh, of one of our best-selling titles, Too Much Sun Will Burn, The British Psychedelic Sounds of 1967, follows a compilation we did again a few years back called Let's Go Down and Blow Our Minds, which has proved extremely popular. And once again, really, it does exactly what it says in the tin. This is covering the UK explosion of, of psychedelic groups in, in, the, in 1967. From that compilation, we're going to hear two tracks by artists who at the time weren't well known, but both became stars in their own right. Nina by Elton John, a track at the time that was never released and Horizons by Alex Harvey. Love won't last 
never satisfy confusion horizon my horizon can I find a rainbow beam to shine a touch for me so when dimensions dark and deep the light will let me see Diminishes not my fire, just magnifies my mirror vision, deepens my just heard two tracks from Too Much Sun Will Burn, the British Psychedelic Sounds of 1967, uh, a sequel to the an earlier edition of that. And that was Elton John with Nina and Alex Harvey with Horizons. Other acts that you can uh, enjoy on the, on the box set that are far more famous in some respects, Traffic, The Hollies, David Bowie, The Pretty Things, The Move, The Who alongside some previously unreleased tracks by really obscure acts like Lisa and Francesca. And, uh, yeah, which was an unreleased Apple Records session, actually. So, yeah, another classic title from Grapefruit, I think. So another archive project of unreleased material that um, we've been enjoying lately uh, relates to the Joe Meek t chest tapes. Hopefully some of you have come across uh, the various reports and a bit of a buzz around our acquisition of these nigh on 2,000 tapes that we spent two, maybe three years digitising and we're now starting to release some of the things we found. Uh, we've got this little 10-inch series, like 10, I suppose they're mini albums or, or EPs, but they're normally about seven or eight tracks. Um, and we did one by Heinz and we did another one based around the Tornadoes or rather Telstar. And the third instalment is an expansion on the, frankly, legendary Joe Meek project, I Hear a New World by the Blue Men, which was actually coordinated as well with a guy called Rod Freeman, who I think was the basis for the music. And this was Joe Meek's kind of idea of, in the sort of, you know, embryonic space age, he wanted to create this science fiction music that was sort of out of this world, that had all these strange sounds. And... This music really, so many years later, because most of it wasn't released at the time, has taken on a life of its own. We've seen tracks licensed for usage in TV and, and film. And uh, so it was an absolute delight when we discovered yet more sessions from the I Hear A New World album, uh, which had never seen the light of day. And the cream of those uh, are coming out on a 10-inch vinyl album, which you can pre-order, I think, at the moment from our website. And we're gonna hear a track from that this is Dribcot Space Boat Take 4.
Dribcot Space Boats Take 4 by Joe Meek and the Blue Men from a forthcoming 10-inch EP, uh, which is very limited edition, so get a copy while it, while it lasts. And now I'm going to hand back to Matt to chat about a couple more projects. Thanks, John. Yeah, the first track I'm going to play is off the new Long Riders album. Uh, we have done the latest album that's their first in four years I think we also did their last new album um, which is called Psychedelic Country Soul but this new one is called September November it's getting really good reviews doing really well across the board the band are in the UK they'll be touring the UK in May including a London show on the t- uh, 20th of May at the 229 Club I'm going to play my favourite track off the album which is called Seasons Change. Seasons Change by the Long Riders, and from one uh, side of the musical spectrum right through to the other, I've, I have to play a Residence track because we we love the Residence here. I saw them live when they played here at the end of January. Uh, and, and how was that for you to see them live? The as as good, if not better, than the previous time I saw them live, which was pre-pandemic. They're an incredible live band. If you have the chance to see them, uh, you should definitely. It kind of all comes together, doesn't it? And it kind yeah. of 
it works and you understand more about what the music's about. Us, we took a, there's a few of us from Cherry Red that went and a few of us that hadn't seen the residents before. So it was their first experience. And I said to them, if you're going to get the residents, this is how you're going to, you know, this is the moment really. And even if maybe not everyone did, the people in the crowd did it. A great mix of young and old, um, every different tribe you can imagine, from heavy metal fans to punks, you know, to businessmen. It was a real, real mix of people, and uh, yeah, always worth seeing the residents. We're we're also reissuing all their classic seventies albums as like double vinyl, which you can get through CherryRed.co.uk, uh, and we're up to the latest one, which is Duck Stab. Buster and Glenn, which is out in May. So I've picked a track off that, which is called The Booker Tease. <laughs> was the Booker Tease by The Residents and now I'll pass back to Ian for the last couple of tracks yeah well the great thing about Cherry Red as regular listeners will know is that we are diverse as diverse as you can get and uh, we've some of us love glam music at Cherry Red and uh, we've got a box set out which is called Can The Glam 2 Teenage Rampage 80 Glam Busters Rockers Shockers and Teeny Boppers from the 70s and of course it's number two so there's already been number one which was very successful and let me play the tracks first we're going to play two tracks hello and star studded sham and the sweet teenage rampage <laughs> Oh, 
was Hello, Star Studded Sham, The Sweet Teenage Rampage, both taken from Can The Glam 2. And they're both bands that I saw play many times over the years, and I, I knew most of them as well quite well. Um, Brian Connolly has sadly uh, departed, and my great friend David Blaylock, who managed Hello, has also sadly departed. Both great bands live, and um, I'm just looking now at some of the... Uh, some of the other bands that are on the uh, box set. <laughs> I can't read it. I, I need a pair of glasses. John, can I borrow your glasses? And here I am trying to read the tracks, some of the other tracks and bands that are on the uh, box set. And my eyes are failing me in the Trayvid studio here. So John, maybe you can help out and just... What would you like to know? I just, I just if you can read, read out six or eight bands that are on there apart from Hello and The Sweet. Yeah, what's fascinating about these, you know, these, these two compilations, there was Can the Glam and Teenage Glam Page, are the number of unknown acts. So on this one you get uh, an artist called Sting, but it's not him, it's another Sting with Thunder Kid, and you get Patches with Telltale, Soho Jets with Denim Goddess, Hush, presumably covering Dave Clark Five's Glad All Over, the Ted Mulry gang would jump in my car. You'd almost think that the guy who compiled this made it up, but these records actually came out, and they are all brilliant gone. classics. <laughs> Absolutely, you either you either you're not going to get any surprises on this. They all sound like the glam hits that you know and love or don't love. That's the fun of it. Okay, thank you, John, and that wraps it up for another edition of Trail Red Radio. Thanks, Professor John Reed and Matt Ingham. And we'll see you again next month.